All right. You know, um, you know, before I begin this story right here, um, I just want to like send my condolences out to, you know, the boy's family who actually got murdered in this story. I know that it was like a real tragic thing and unfortunate, and and the fact that I'm actually going to speak about this, I just I just want to send my condolences before I actually speak about it. So, um, anyway, when I was in Tehachapi Shoe, there was a kid. His name was Bubba from from San Diego, and Bubba Bubba was this you know this big kid, and he was likable, you know, funny, charismatic. He was loyal. I mean, he was just an all around good kid. And when we got released from the shoe. He ended up in Sentinella on Sea Yard on uh, Aryan Brotherhood, John Stinson, and Aryan Brotherhood Cordless he landed on their yard. Now, prior to Bubba actually getting to Sentinella on Sea Yard, he happened to be in high desert with an Aryan Brotherhood member, Pat Brady. Pat Brady from West Side Coast to Mesa. And, you know, Pat Brady got caught up in that indictment. So Bubba happened to actually be on that yard with Pat Brady and Without going into, like, too much detail, he got himself into trouble right there in high desert with Pat Brady. And when he dropped his points from a 180, that's when he landed in Sentinella with Cordless and John Stinson. Now, the call came through once Stinson left, and Pat Brady happened to call Cordless, and, and that's that's when he ordered the murder. He ordered the murder of Bubba and... You know, I've known Cordless for a long time. I've known Pat Brady for a long time. And, you know, it had to have been something that was pretty legit in order for this guy to to call those, those type of hits because he's a pretty fair dude, and I know him personally. So, you know, I'm I'm not going to get into too much detail of that. But so Cordless, you know, when the call came through, he's going back and forth with Pat Brady, you know, trying to save this kid because Bubba is from San Diego, and he's actually getting close to home. You know, he's getting, you know, finished with his term, and Bubba's trying to be on the path to better himself. So he's trying to get home, and he's doing the right thing, and Cordless is doing whatever he possibly can to speak up for this kid, but Homeboy is not letting it go. He wants this dude smoked. He wants him smoked on the yard, and I guess it was sanctioned by the A.B. Commission, so the hits the hits a go. There's nothing that Cordless can do to stop this. Now, on Sea Yard and Sentinella in 2017, that's when this hit went down. And Bubba, you know, he was, you know, he was going to computer class behind the wall in vocation. Now, behind the wall in vocation, he had a best friend named Squirt. Him and Squirt used to keep each other out of trouble. And Bubba was making all these plans to go home and better himself for his family. And his family was waiting on him. And as he was getting closer to closer to home. He had no idea that this was actually coming. This He was completely oblivious to this because they used the Aryan Brotherhood antic and told Bubba that he actually had control of Sea Yard at that time. So Bubba was actually doing all the dealings between other races for the, for the active white inmates at the time. So that was just a tactic to get him to drop his guard and, you know, feel super comfortable. So that's what was going on. And the shooter... I'm not going to mention who his name is, but the actual shooter to this murder, this is a a well-known thing that actually happened. The shooter was in the shoe with me as well. But he had already got himself into a mess because he was on disregard the entire time in the shoe. We weren't allowed to fish with him. We weren't allowed to talk with him or nothing. And through the fact that he got himself into trouble in the shoe, um, he was now in bad standings with the Aryan Brotherhood out on the main line on Sea Yard with Bubba at that time. And they were basically, you know, he was skating on thin ice. So what happened was, is prior to this actual hit, the shooter had actually gotten into a personal issue with another white inmate named Havoc from Metal Mines on the yard. Now, Havoc punked this dude out on the yard, and he didn't do anything. So Cordless went and approached him and told him, look, you're a punk now, you're on disregard on the shoe, and now you're out here just getting punked on the yard. We don't allow punks on the yard, so you better handle your business. And that's what he did. Homeboy rolled up on Havoc while Havoc wasn't looking, and he ended up cutting his throat. And, and I know Havoc personally, and just like I said on one of my documentaries, you're not allowed to do that when you have a personal issue with another white. You have to come from the shoulders. You are not allowed to roll up on them and cut his throat. So that's what he did. And Homeboy came up on him and cut Havoc's throat. Now he's in deep, deep. 
I mean, now he owes a cleanup. So this is why he got put in the position to murder Bubba. So this is what happened. Behind the wall in vocation, Bubba and Squirt used to walk to and from computer class like clockwork every day, and they used to stand side by side. Well, this morning in particular of the actual hit, um, the Sureños and the Mexican Mafia that were back there behind the wall actually assisted on getting him some weapon stock. They actually assisted him on getting some metal. And the metal, the weapon stock, formed into a knife that looked like a mini machete. And it was so big that the shooter actually had a hard time putting it inside his waistline. And he owed a cleanup. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. He could not back out of this one, and in his mindset, he's thinking he's going to do whatever he has to do to redeem himself to get back into good standings with the Aryan Brotherhood. Now, this morning, did it actually happen? Bubba and Squirt are walking to computer class, and Bubba is completely oblivious that he's actually got a murder on him, and, and he's walking comfortably, talking to Squirt. Squirt's right next to him, and they're laughing and joking, and the shooter is right in front of him trying to pull this big old knife out of his waistline, but he's having a hard time doing it because it's so big. And what happened was is he finally got it out, and Bubba wasn't paying attention, and he turned around, and he stuck that knife right through Bubba's juggler, and Bubba was walking towards it, so he walked right into it. And when he walked right into it, the knife went right through Bubba's neck and was hanging out the back side, and everybody scattered. Everybody scattered, and Bubba just dropped right there on the spot. Squirt, his best friend, seen it with his own very eyes, and he immediately started throwing up, and everybody went into a panic mode. And at that time, the shooter was getting rid of the piece. I mean, it was such a big piece, but they had to hide it somewhere. This, is, this wasn't a piece you could actually flush. And they're in computer class, so there's a lot of people around, and there's nobody around to actually see this murder take it. Nobody ever got caught for this murder. It's still a mystery to this day. And so Bubba gets rid of the, or, uh, the shooter gets rid of the knife, and the computer lady, her name is Mrs. Bilo. Mrs. Bilo, when I was in Sentinella, she actually used to be the teacher of my computer class. So she was the same one that was there when I was there. So Mrs. Bilo came out to see what all the commotion was. And when she came out, she just seen Bubba lying there dead. I mean, he, 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 he was dead on the spot. I mean, it went right through his juggler. And Mrs. Bilo started freaking out, and she has, you know, PTSD to this day because of what she just watched. I mean, this was a horrific thing. This was such an unfortunate thing, and so she started panicking. So when she started panicking, she she hit her alarm button, and the paramedics came, the cops came, and by the time actual paramedics got there, he was already pronounced dead on the spot. And it's a shame because, you know, the person who actually stabbed Bubba you know, um, was only doing it because he was in trouble. And, you know, in my personal opinion, I I don't think that he had it coming. He was on S-Time. Bubba was on S-Time. So he was literally days to the house. And his family was waiting on him, um, and they were welcoming his release. And they had all these things planned for him, and yet he got himself in trouble with the Aryan Brotherhood. So what happened was is the actual shooter, a squirt, and a couple other whites that were actually around the scene they got snatched up on the spot for investigation, and nobody actually knew who did this homicide. I knew because when I was in the hole, I spoke to him, and I spoke to Cordless personally, and I knew of it. I knew the details of it, and, you know, I'd never felt that, you know, Bubba had it coming. So that's why I'm speaking on it right now and just letting it, you know, be out there because it was actually one of those things that make you understand the aggressiveness of the Aryan Brotherhood. I mean, the ramifications of disrespect and the Aryan Brotherhood member, that's where it gets you. And, you know, I guess prior, when he was in high desert, he got into it with Pat Brady, and uh, he had owed some money on the yard. So since he owed money on the yard, he, you know, did what he had to do to, I guess, get off the yard, and it just followed him, and it followed him all the way down to Sentinella. And so when we were back in the hole, I actually spoke to the shooter who smoked it, who smoked Bubba, and I had numerous talks with them, and, you know, I asked him, I asked him, I, I told him, I said, you know, what was that about? And he had told me that, you know, aside from cutting Havoc's throat, it was because he was on disregard in the shoe, and the reason why he was on disregard in the shoe was is because he cited 
with Bullet from the Aryan Brotherhood, who happened to be an imposter. Bullet from the Aryan Brotherhood was an imposter who came to Orange County Jail and was claiming to be an Aryan Brotherhood, and he was sending out orders left and right. And this shooter who killed Bubba was actually following his instructions. So that's why he got put on disregard in the shoe. So he had to do something to clean it up. And Bullet from the Aryan Brotherhood actually had a lot of people who got hot up and got a lot of people hurt, just like my homeboy Devlin, who I'll talk about like later. My homeboy Devlin from Peni, the same thing happened to him. He ended up murdered in New Folsom. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Now, the irony behind this type of stuff is kind of crazy because the person who stabbed Bubba was back during the whole fighting and investigation. And nobody was talking. Nobody was saying anything, and there wasn't enough evidence to actually convict the shooter of anything, so they ended up releasing him to B Yard. They released him to B Yard in Sentinella, and while he was out there, he was feeling comfortable, and he was out there bragging about what he did to Bubba. And Bubba was about 28, 29 years old. He was a good friend of mine. He definitely didn't deserve this. And you got this guy who's out there, you know, bragging about putting down a murder for the Aryan Brotherhood. And he had a lot of stuff brewing from the past. And, and, and finally, it all came back around on him from what he did to Havoc and, and, and cut his throat. So two whites were actually instructed to stab him. They ended up stabbing him really bad. It was a, it was a two-on-one on the yard. And they rode him to the dirt, and from what I understand was is, you know, he had a long, this was a long time coming, and they, they damn near killed him. So, I mean, it just goes to show you right there that what goes around comes around. And, you know, like I said at the very beginning of this story, uh, uh, my condolences go out to Bubba's family, and I really, it's such an unfortunate situation that stuff like this happens. And, you know, um, so that's that's it pretty much what happened with that story right there and Bubba did not deserve any of this like he did not deserve to be to be killed like that and you know it ended up being a a mystery and when I ended up dropping out and going through the THU I actually put it down in my autobiography who actually killed you know killed Bubba because I felt like his family deserved it I felt like it was me kind of like giving back a little bit and like I was saying earlier about my homeboy Devlin. My homeboy Devlin was caught up in the same thing as this shooter was who killed Bubba. You have 60 seconds remaining.